Hello, everyone. Well, thank you very much for coming. Can everyone hear me well in the back? Great. So let's go. So today we are going to talk about how archaeologists in France built crazy tools entirely in SQL to analyze and process uh, archaeology data on the field. So this talk is going to have three parts. Thomas is going to start with uh, explaining what kind of data we are working with, what archaeologists do every day on the field and in the lab. Then I'll take the floor back to explain uh, how you can build an app entirely in SQL and how we can build and how you can build uh, an app such as the one they built entirely in SQL. And then Thomas is going to wrap up with uh, a presentation of the archaeology multi-tool that they built, which is uh, quite powerful and uh, quite a, a nice demo. So before I let Thomas start, a quick word about me. So my name is uh, Ophir Loshkin. Uh, I'm a CTO at a French e-mobility startup. During the day, during the night, I'm the father of a beautiful uh, baby girl. And in between, I'm an open source contributor. So I contribute on uh, multiple different projects, but the main one, the one I spend the most time on is a SQL page which is the tool that Thomas uses to, to build his uh, archaeology apps. So I'll get into much more details later, but in two words, it's a tool that takes uh, your SQL queries and turns them into web applications and websites. Thomas? Thank you. Hello, everyone. So my name is Thomas, Thomas Guillemot. And uh, for beginning, I'm not one of your world. I'm not a developer. I'm not a database manager. I'm just an archaeologist, French archaeologist, maybe the only one in this place, except in this beautiful city of Athens, maybe. So uh, I'm in charge of archaeological operation in my country. My specialty is Gallo-Roman antiquity, and I work at INRAP. INRAP. That means the French National Institute for Preventive Archaeological Research, and it's a public institution. I'm also a member of a small collective of geeky archaeologists named Ramen. Ramen for uh, it's for research and development to find new tools for our work in archaeology. Before we start, maybe context about archaeology in France. It's important to explain how archaeology works in France. There are two types of archaeology research: programmed archaeology and preventive archaeology. So the first one, program archaeology, we have time because uh, it works on known sites, in, sites sorry, in order to understand them better, often over the course of several years. Very often, there are academic projects. So we have on-site student and teacher. For the second one, preventive archaeology, we don't have time because we need to, our work, it's my work, we need to, uh, to assess the potential of the archaeological site prior to construction, construction projects like roads, park, car park, and uh, buildings. So, the construction projects will destroy the site. So we need to collect data before. It's my job. What they have in common, these two types of archaeology, 
it's uh, it produces a lot of data, a lot of data for us archaeologists. Maybe not for you, but for us, it's a lot of data. Yes, sorry. An example of a of an office of an archaeologist. Sorry, it's my office. It's a big mess. It's uh, my office with three other colleagues, and we see uh, in the office, in this office, a lot of paper, a lot of artifacts in the box, etc., etc. A lot of data. Why a lot of data? The archaeology, the, the operation, destroys remains to understand what, what there is. So we need to collect and we call all the archaeologists find on the ground. Everything that archaeologists Everything that archaeologist finds in is recorded, and everything that archaeologist does is recording. Okay. And also, archaeology is a vast field of science. There are many, 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 many specialties. It's it's human. It's human. So many human, many specialties. So many methods. Of to collect data, etc. It's a little bit problematic for us. So, since a long time, we digitize the data, like uh, inventories, spreadsheet, like uh, specialized study. Maybe the first one you see this in this type of talk. It's a um, skeleton mannequin. Who, it serves to, to recall if the bones is complete or present on a burial, for example. And all the drawings that the archaeologist realize is digitized. So really, it's ugly, but it's just an example. Again, also, sorry, also since a few years, it's also one of my job, um, there is the use of GIS, Geographic Information System. More, more, many, many archaeologists use this GIS system, but they don't have the skills, the necessary skills to use it properly. So we were doing uh, training, training for us. I'm a trainer for my colleagues, and I try to improve their competence, their skills in this uh, area. Another part of the context of this talk. Since a few years, there is a program. Archaeology in a town named Noisy Le Grand. The big noisy is a joke for us, but Noisy Le Grand is near to Paris, to the east. So, this is a medieval necropolis, 8th centuries and 9th centuries. So, there is a lot of tombs, a lot of burial. There is program archaeology, so we have time. There is a lot of students and some teacher. We can do experimentation. We have time. So in, in this case, the archaeologists want to do wanted to do an experimentation with no paper to the recall. So the collective women was born after that. The aim of the women collective is to find tools 
So on the ground, on the, the laboratory, in the laboratory, with no paper, just with tablets, just with computer, just with smartphone maybe. And it's for us, archaeologists, not for you maybe, but just for us, archaeologists, it's new. Okay? In the context, I explain to you. So, no paper. Sorry. In practice on the field, special data, that means you know, is acquired using photogrammetry. I don't know if you know what is photogrammetry. No? One? Just one. We have a winner. So, photogrammetry is a technique that uses photos to create 3D models. Okay? To say simply. So, the special data of the remains is created by photogrammetry. There is no traditional topographic survey. And the description recording can be made on a PC or a tablet. But which tool? We don't have tool. And it is the creation of the Badass project. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a joke, it's a real name. It is the acronym for BAS Archaeological Data Attribute and Special System. It's a real acronym, but it's easy to remember the name. Initially, it was a SQLite database, but now it's a big Postgres database using the PostGIS plugin. Big for us, maybe not for you, but for us it's big. It, it was possible because we know SQL. Some archaeologists, a few archaeologists, know already SQL, just SQL. We are not developers, we just archaeologists, but we know SQL. So we can manage, develop. Uh, a Postgres database. No surprise, we use the DNA to administer this database. This is not the real diagram of our structure, but it's just some concepts, some archaeological concepts. So, it is the right place to explain to you some of these concepts. Maybe the three more important for us archaeologists. Facts, stratigraphic unit, and artifacts. Behind those concepts, we, are, we have a lot of table. Just look at this concept. Take a burial, a tomb. Okay? For us, it's a fact. Archaeological fact. In this fact, we have one or more components. It's that we call stratigraphic unit. Maybe a skeleton, maybe a coffin, maybe, maybe the fill of the burial. And we have another concept, artifacts. It can be ceramics that we find in the fill, or uh, jewels, etc. We can, we want to record the data in this concept. So, trust me, the structure is more bigger. There is uh, almost 40 tables minimum. I don't remember the exact number. The, the aim of this. The archaeological, the archaeological principles are well known and can validate for a long time. So, it's the, for us, is the architecture of the database that's new. The archaeologist identifies and records the remain uncovered 
followed by the three dimensional survey carried out by the topographer or the photogrammetric system. Then we have a lot of triggers also. They update the tables filled in, in, filled in by the archaeologist with the geometry according to the identifier and types. So we have principle in archaeology, recording principle, and we have to respect that. But we can have with the structure uh, data integrity. We are also about to use the power of SQL to create queries to check the validity and the geometric and descriptive of the geometric, sorry, and descriptive data according to the archaeologist recording principles. One more time. And what interface? QGIS. I don't know if you know this software, but it's our favorite software. GIS software. QGIS is our user interface with Badass database. It's a free and open source software. Uh, we, are, we can put Detail uh, forms using the, relas the relational database. And archaeologists use the software as usual. Maybe uh, the past day with just simple table, simple layer. Okay, but behind there is a big Postgres database. Also, the Badass project, like I said, is being developed at the necropolis of noisy le -Grand. So, we have also developed an extension to the database for anthropology, another specialty, to record data specific to the tombs. Okay, an example, with forms, with geometric, the archaeologist is capable to Return data on each bone he finds in the barrel. Okay, but no. Oh, so you can you can also uh, record a lot of data like measurement to determine, for example, the sex, the age, and different pathology of the skeletons, and there is a behind a lot of trigger to calculate some some um, statue statue yeah maybe etc there is a lot of trigger behind this but there's always a problem for us a catch because GIS is not very practical on the field it's not responsive Okay, so QGIS, sorry, have a mobile have a mobile solution named Crefield, but not very ergonomic. So we need to find a solution that that was both mobile and ergonomic, and we discovered SQL page. I think so. Great. Uh, okay, so we are leaving Thomas with a problem here. So he has a, a, a big database and a quite impractical way to access it. So he needs something that works on the field and that is customizable to access, query, and insert data into the database uh, uh, quickly and efficiently. But yeah, as you guessed, Thomas is not a developer and he doesn't really have the time to learn a new JavaScript framework uh, every day. So he needs something to make an app anyway. And this is where our SQL page comes in. SQL page is a single executable that you launch, you put a SQL file somewhere near, near it, and it renders it as a website. So we'll see in much more details how it works. 
but in two words, it's made for people like Thomas. It's made for people who need applications, often uh, internal applications. They need it built fast because their job, their main job is to use the application. It's not to build it. And they don't have uh, advanced knowledge in backend or frontend languages. They don't know CSS and they don't really have either the time or the interest to, to go into that. So SQL page is what allows you to write a file with a .SQL extension, put it on a web server, connect it to your database, and get a website. So maybe by a show of hands, who in the, who in the room has already made an app that looked like the one on the left? Oh, great, great, yeah, I see. So. You are all database engineers. You, 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 you are people who, who who know how to make apps, but when you do something, it it, it often looks like that. And and then yeah, it's beautiful in your eyes, but then you get offensive comments by uh, girls in your team. So that's not what you want. So. Ideally, you could build something even faster than it took to, to build the ugly app. And uh, that works just as well, and that is uh, just as uh, easy to use them. So this is what we are going to do right now. So we are going to build a very small subset of uh, what Thomas has built live on stage so that you get a feeling for what it does and how it works. So of course, we won't have the time to uh, dive into the 40 tables uh, of Thomas, but I took the advice of my favorite archeologist who is not Thomas, but Indiana Jones. And he said that uh, archeology span is not a search for truth, it's a search for fit. So we are going to focus, focus our efforts only on the facts table. So it's the true facts table they have. And we are going to build a small application to interact with it. So interact with it. The first thing we will want to do is to show our users the facts we have in our database. So how do we do that? We do that with two SQL queries. So what you see on the left is the two SQL queries, and what you see on the right is the result. So there is really no, no more code than what you see on screen. There is nothing hidden. Every, everything that is uh, uh, displayed here is made automatically by SQL page. So what are the two SQL queries we need to show the contents of, of our facts table? The first one is going to be a query to select one of the components that comes built into SQL page. So there is no magic. The, the HTML and CSS has to come from somewhere. But with SQL page, it comes built into the binaries that you download. And then you just have to select one of the many components from the, the framework just by its name. So you select list as component, and it's a true SQL query, but SQL page is smart. And when it sees a very simple query like that, it's not even going to send it to your Postgres server. It's going to understand that it's a static simple query and it's going to uh, analyze it internally without even sending it to Postgres. But the, the second query is the main query, the one we want to, the one that returns the data we want to show our users. And this one is going, so it's a, it's a true SQL query. I could have written a, a very complicated query if I, I wanted to. But here, I just want to return all the data from my facts table. And I just select it. And in order for the list component to understand where to put which data, 
I just name the columns in my uh, query so that it matches the expected property names from the components. So uh, SQL page has an extensive documentation. Each uh, component has a, a list of uh, properties that it expects. So here the list component has a title property and a description property among many others. But we are just running our query, making it return uh, uh, a list of uh, of rows from the database with a title column and a description column. And SQL page is going to handle all of the rest automatically. And when I will load the application in my browser, I will see the result. So this is a kind of thing that would have uh, taken much, much longer if uh, First, it would have taken uh, multiple years to uh, get ahead of the latest JavaScript frameworks, and then it would even have taken a few more minutes to to to, to get started with uh, even just uh, listing basing data like that. So once we have that, we can uh, customize it uh, as much as we want. So, for instance, the list components that uh, we just saw has a, a title top level attribute. So you see, I can add attributes uh, uh, together with the select list as component query. And these attributes are going to apply to the entire component. And here I'm adding the title. Here I'm hard coding the title, but I could uh, have it come from a subquery, for instance, for, for it to come from the database. And then I can use the normal Postgres uh, string formatting functions and uh, uh, arbitrary ex uh, Postgres expressions to extract the data in the format that I need. So for instance, I need to, to add uh, colors in here. So I just add a case statement in, in my Postgres query and uh, it returns the data in the format that the list component expects and it renders it. So it's as simple as that. So you have already seen most of what is needed to build a website in SQL page. So we are going to get into some of the, the, the cooler, more advanced features, but you have already gotten the, the basic principle, which is just you select the components and then you fill it with your data by uh, just uh, making a, a select query that returns the columns with uh, the appropriate names. So what we see here is uh, something I call the pseudo functions. That is uh, functions that will be executed inside SQL page and not inside the database. So it allows you to call functions on the SQL page server when you need, uh, so when you need some more advanced uh, uh, behavior. So here, the, the function is quite basic. It's just a link function, and it's uh, going to format uh, my link with URL parameters. So I don't want to have to do a URL encoding in SQL. So it's built into SQL page. SQL page is going to see that. It's going to transparently transform the query where, when it sends it to Postgres. And when it receives the results from Postgres, it's going to uh, analyze it and build the link as uh, expected. And we end up with uh, our, our list of archaeological facts with a link on, uh, on each fact. So you are guessing what our next step is going to be. We are going to build a fact page. So we are adding a link to fact.sql. So let's write fact.sql. And it's going to let us introduce an important thing in a SQL page, which is how do we get the ID from the URL? So you see fact.sql, question mark, ID equal three. So how do we get this ID into our SQL queries? The answer is very simple. It's right here. You just write dollar ID. So 
what SQL page is going to see when it parses your query is that uh, you have a dollar ID inside it. It's going to look for URL parameters, take the ID from the URL parameters and bind it into the, the SQL preprint statement before sending it to Postgres. And this way, so it's just three characters, it's dollar ID. And we can uh, make a dynamic application which has uh, multiple pages which are generated dynamically with URL parameters. So here I'm uh, extracting the, the fact from the database. I'm using a new component. So, so far we had seen only the list component. We are using a simple component which is uh, called the data grid. And it expects uh, two properties, title and description, like before. And we put uh, three titles, fact, description, and status. And we take the data from our CTE that was uh, extract that extracted the data from Postgres uh, using the ID from the URL parameters. So you see here the ID that is extracted with dollar ID. So cool, we have already built something useful. We have uh, a site uh, with all of our archaeological facts and uh, we can uh, browse the facts and display uh, detailed information about each fact. And it took us uh, four SQL queries. And now we want to be able to add new archaeological facts into the database. So how are we going to do it? The answer is not complicated. We are just going to use the form component. So we have seen the list component, the data grid component, and we have a component that makes forms and it works just like the others. So I select form as component and then uh, each select below is going to return a new form field. We support a lot of uh, different uh, uh, form field types. So here we just have uh, a text input and uh, a select input to, to let the user select uh, uh, among a, a list of options. And the important part here is uh, process new fact dot SQL as action, which specifies where the user is going to be taken to once they fill the form. So I think guessing the next step this time again is not very hard. We are going to write process new facts dot SQL. So it's a, the page that is going to be loaded with the results from our form. And we are going to need to take the values that the user put in the form to do something with them. So again, there is no, no special syntax. It's only simple SQL. And I'm using a normal insert statement with uh, uh, a special way of uh, binding uh, uh, parent parameter uh, attributes. So I'm using a colon here. You remember that I extracted data from the, from the page URL with dollar ID. And this time I don't want to take the data from the URL. I want to take it from the form values and I do it with colon. And that's pretty much all. SQL page is going to parse this query, replace the colon interpretation and colon status with uh, the values that the user puts in the form and run the query. The query is going to run and to return uh, a value and the value that it is going to return is going to call a new component, which is a redirect component. The redirect component uh, allows us to take the user to a different page. So once the data has been inserted into the database, we want to redirect the user to the fact.sql page that we have seen just before. And that's all. We have built a full application that, uh, that allows us to, to list and add new archaeological facts. So quickly about uh, SQL page itself. 
it has uh, 35 components. We have seen just a very, uh, very few of them. This is a, a, a quick uh, example of uh, the, the kind of uh, graphical components that come built into SQL page. There are, ma there are many different uh, widgets and you can build your own just by writing an HTML template if you have the spirit of an artist, which are, if I understood well, a lot of you don't. And we saw the SQL page dot link function right be before, but it has many more functions uh, uh, which allow you to interact with the environment uh, SQL page is running on. So it has SQL page dot exec to execute scripts. So when you have complicated logic, you don't have to write it in SQL. You can write let's say a Python script and uh, call, let SQL page call it uh, and return the result back into uh, the, the, the database. It has SQL page dot fetch to interact with uh, outside APIs. It can also read and write files uh, locally and a lot of uh, basic utilities to work in a web environment. So how does it work internally? I think you are starting to, to get it. It's a web server. It comes with a built-in uh, web server with uh, SSL built-in so that you don't even have to put it uh, uh, behind a reverse proxy if you don't want to. It comes with multiple database drivers, Postgres, of course. I wouldn't be there otherwise, but also MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and an important one is SQLite, which allows you to build an app with SQL page without even uh, uh, having an external uh, 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 SQL Server, uh, because SQLite is built into SQL page. So when you launch SQL page without uh, uh, connecting to any database, it creates a local uh, SQLite database and you can get started with your project comes with a SQL parser, so we have touched on this before, so that it can uh, 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 replace the important parts of your queries uh, with data coming from the HTTP request. It has a large set of components and a CSS library so that your websites don't look ugly. Uh, the I won't get into a lot of details about the internals, but very basically, it gets an HTTP request. It analyzes to know which SQL file to execute. It takes the SQL file, parses it, uh, replaces value from the URL, from the, fr fr from the HTTP uh, request body. Uh, then when the, the prepared statement is ready, it sends it to the database and then it uh, uh, reads the results as they come and it streams them back uh, to the browser. So it starts answering uh, the, the HTTP request even before the database has finished returning its last row. And this is what makes it so fast. When you build a, a website in a SQL page, everything feels instantane in instantaneous because the web page starts rendering data from your da da database even before your, your query is, uh, has finished running. So it's a rare feature that uh, um, most uh, traditional frameworks don't have, and it makes the, the, the final applications a pleasure to use. So I'm giving the floor back to Thomas to show what he built with SQL page. So, so thank you. BadMobile. Let me present you BadMobile. So, it's the badass on mobile, so it's on mobile. It's easy. So it's a welcome form, okay? And you can see the request used to create this interface, okay? And we have the list component and the low parameter 
to have all these objects on the interface. We can, as an archaeologist, I can do that because I just know SQL. There is no CSS. I don't know CSS. There is no HTML. I don't know HTML and, uh, and other language. I just know SQL. So I can not do that. We can do other form. This is uh, the table component. We can uh, show all the anthropological fact and unit in a table component. And you can put link. We can put. We can use icons to make the difference between a coffin, a skeleton, or a secondary deposit of bones. Maybe it's more complicated, but we can. And we can also access to more interface to record a lot of measurement. So this one is the fact form. Is the fact form. Oh, sorry. And this is the, the interface you can scroll through on your smartphone to the top, to the back. Okay. And as an archaeologist, on the ground with my smartphone, I can do, I can recall everything I need. The description, the dimension, the treatment progress of this fact, uh, the component of this fact, which is in relation with the, this fact, and also the photos, the photogrammetric models, and also, it's very important for us because special is in attribute is the same data. We have also a map component. It's a, a bonus, very important for us because we, you can uh, see on black, in black, the 8, 11 barrel is number. And also we can see all the other barrels in gray. And if you click on it, on it, on one, of them, you can access to the form on, of this bureau. So, this is um, a form with a section, the welcome form. Here is the, and the form with administration information. We have a map, all the excavation, all the burial, you, you can click on the, on the number, you have the form of, of this uh, number, of this burial, all the component, the photos, the photographic model, and the map component with the geometry. We can see photos. Okay, we can click on a component of this burial. So it's a little bit longer. This component is the skeleton of the burial. So we have also the geometry of this component. For us, it's very practical because we have all in one tool. We have the anthropological interface. Okay, we can put some information. We can recall the interpretation, the sex, the age, some pathologies. We have also other forms to check the record, if it's complete, if it's incomplete. And we have also some links to access Sorry, to the photogrammetric model, always on my smartphone. Okay. Quickly, some feedback for all the archaeologists that use Badass and Badmobile. A lot of change. Before that, it's a little bit difficult to have um, a software 
multi-user online. And if this, if in, um, sorry, and if it exists, it's not free and open source. So it's free and open source. On the left picture, you have eight archaeologists on three computers, three smartphones, and two tablets with the same Postgres database, all on the bad mobile interface. We can use tablets, and we can see on the right the, the big box of Noisy Le Grand excavation, Cyril Le Forestier. He used his smartphone to record the information of this burial. On the ground, it's very useful, but also in laboratory. Okay. And this is an example of uh, use of bad mobile in laboratory. On this computer, on the right picture, we have two screens. On one screen, you have QGIS, and on the other screen, you have bad mobile, but behind is the same Postgres database. Thank you. OK. Thank you. Thank you very much. So please give us feedback. If you like this, if you like this talk, uh, scan the QR code on the left and uh, give us a positive feedback. It will be heartwarming. Uh, if you liked it, you will probably want to try SQL page two. So you can do that with the QR code on the right, which will take you to the SQL page website and then to the GitHub and you can download it and try it uh, uh, on your computer. Of course, it's entirely free and open source. So thank you very much. Excellent. You have three minutes left for questions if you want to take any questions. Thank you so much for your presentation. So my question, uh, what you would like to improve with this tool? Where, what do you see like, it's great. I, I, honestly, it's so great. Uh, where you see like room for improvement? Uh, in, in which tool? Is this a question for me for improvement in SQL Pay? Uh, okay, for the app. For the app. For the, for the app. For, 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 for me, then. For, for. Uh, for, for for the the SQL page application or the the bad mobile? Ah, okay. So this is a question for you. Right now, it's just wonderful for us. Okay, but uh, I won't improve. If I was Ophiolochkin, I won't improve the map component because it's very important for us the the geometric aspect. Of the, the geometric object because it's the same thing with attributes. So if I was him, I work on it. We have time for one more. If it's relatively quick. Um, just a quick one. You mentioned going underground in excavations. Has it ever happened to you that you have no internet? Then how do you access the the app, the the bad mobile, if you don't have internet in an excavation? Can this happen? Yeah, yeah. In in uh, archaeology, in primitive archaeology, sometimes we find nothing. Sometimes it's my job. Sometimes I find a lot, a lot of remains, and sometimes I find I find nothing. But even I find nothing, I do something. So I use Band Mobile to record my uh, technique record, like trenches, like observation on the ground. But uh, I, I think the question was ah, about, sorry. Uh, uh, how do you do when you don't have internet access? On oh, site? OK. I'm sorry. I don't understand. It's a problem. But as uh, Ophir said, we can use the database on SQLite. So we can have SQLite on a, a computer, on a tablet. It's local. Excellent. All right. We are out of time. Thank you so much. That was great. That was really excellent.